Hi, I'm Espen Proft. I am the 80s. 80s. That's right, I'm Espen Croft. Thank you so much for watching. This thing, this is the Sequential Prophet 2000 sampler from 1985. And this sampler sounds insanely good. It's also insanely difficult, complicated, and crazy to program, especially when it comes to mapping sounds out on the keyboard. And checking on YouTube, I can't find any tutorials or workflow videos that actually shows how this works. So today, I'm gonna rectify that. Today, I'm gonna rectify that, that, that. When I come to the tutorial part of this video where I show you the sampling process and the mapping especially, I'm going to rely heavily on the excellent Prophet 2000 Clinic by Paul Wiffen from Keyboard Magazine, October 1987. In this issue, Paul Wiffen goes through every intricacy of mapping out sounds in the sampler and a lot of other stuff as well, because it is very, very cumbersome and complicated to program. But Paul does the best he can, and he does an excellent job of showing step by step how this is done. So first I'm going to show you how I sampled the drum machine for this demo track. I'm going to do this quick and dirty. After you turn on the Prophet 2000, press the preset button, go into the sound sampling row, the first row, and press delete. Change the parameter value to all and press execute. Now you've deleted all the samples in memory. Now you choose the rate, sampling rate, 16, 31, or 42 kilohertz. And you choose your memory size and press execute. Now you press record sample and play back your sound source to check that the volumes are what you want them to be. And I'm using the KR55 here because I'm going to use the bass drum and the snare drum and the hats and the toms in my demo. I'm going to chop them up. And now I sample that beat into the Prophet 2000.
Don't worry if this went too fast, I'm going to show you the whole sampling process again from a better angle, slower tempo, in a minute. So when the sampling is done, press the sound number and you can now play that sample. And now you can set the start and end point and find loop points in your sample if you want to. It's all in the top row. So let's change out the start point. There is a little bit of release on the sample, so I'm going to turn that off. And so by changing the start and end points of the loop, I found the individual hits in the loop and I recorded those individual hits into the door and there assembled the drum beat from this loop of the 2000. Later, as I will show you, I sampled the whole demo track into the 2000 and got that filter resonance beat going. Uh, I'm going to show you that also in a minute. Before we continue, let's have a look at my sponsor for this video, PCB Way. And PCBWay, they are a manufacturer of custom-made circuit boards for your electronics projects. But they also have online CNC machining, 3D printing, injection molding, sheet metal fabrication, etc. So whatever you're in need of in terms of custom-made circuit boards or parts associated with that, you should definitely check out PCBWay. I'll leave a link for you in the video description. However, this way of doing sampling into the 2000 is not the way to go if you want to build up uh, a multi-sample and keep your sanity at the same time. Because the mapping structure of those presets in the 2000 when you fire it up will still remain even if you delete the samples. And by keeping the mapping structure of those presets, that's going to mess up your world a whole lot. So you have to clear the 2000 of all mapping before you can continue to load in samples on your own or sample samples of your own. So you have to do that first. And that's where the Paul Wiffen Profit 2000 Clinic from Keyboard Magazine really comes in handy because in that issue, he shows you how to do a complete clearance of all mappings in the Profit 2000 and then save that uh, clean slate, if you want to, into a disk, uh, which he calls a null disk. And that null disk is the disk you should load up every time you want to use the Profit 2000 as a sampling device. So I uh, did just that. I've made this null disk and saved this onto my floppy emulator. So each time I'm going to use the Profit 2000, I load up this null disk first to clear all maps and samples from memory. I highly recommend you do the same. So here I've just turned on the Prophet 2000 and the first thing I'm going to do now is load in that null disk. So I uh, dial that up on the floppy emulator, find that image or you insert your floppy disk into the drive if you have that and load that into the Prophet 2000. So that's what I'm doing here. Press execute. And it's going to flash a while, showing you that it's loading in a program. And it's done, and this sampler is now a blank canvas. And now we have to do everything by the book. You press the preset button, and you choose the first sound you want to sample. That's sound number one. That's very important that you keep track of what sound number is what. Okay, so we have sound number one. Then you press the rate and choose from 16 to 31 to 42 kilohertz, depending on what you want. I'm gonna go with 31 here. I press sample size and dial in, in this case, 64. And I press execute. And now I'm going to record sample and set the level by pressing down a key on the Juno 106, which I'm gonna sample here. And the lower row and the left column will show you the signal strength. And if you now press execute, it will sample that signal coming in. You won't hear anything while you're sampling. Be aware of that. And I'm sampling the key of C3 on the Juno 106. That'll be important later. 
at this point, I go straight back to sound number and choose sound number two. And I do the whole sampling process over again. The same settings for this new sound. And now I'm going to sample the key of C4 from the Juno 106. So it's sampling that. And again, I don't hear anything while I'm sampling. So that is done. And I now have two different samples in memory. Sound number one and sound number two. But remember, we've cleared all the maps from memory now by loading in that null disk. So we won't be able to hear those samples unless we go into map override mode. So while you're on the sound number, you press execute. And now you see a little dot in front of the sound number. And that shows you you're in map override mode. And so now I can alternate between the different sound numbers, the samples, by choosing map override mode and hear those different samples. And now I can also edit those samples in terms of start point, end point, and finding loops, etc. So I'm going to trim off a little bit of excess in front uh, and at the end of each sample to um, save um, memory so I can sample more sounds into this quite limited amount of memory. I won't go into detail on how to set loop points here. You can find out uh, that for yourself. It's just a bit of a hit and miss to find a good loop point. Uh, luckily, the Prophet 2000 has a very nice and efficient zero crossing memory loop uh, functionality. So you can uh, easily find a good loop point on this sampler actually. I referred to the manual for that, or the Paul Wiffen uh, clinic in that keyboard magazine. When you've found a good start and end point, and you want to trim off the excess memory in front and at the back of that sample, just press uh, recover memory and press execute, and you have trimmed that sample. Be aware that if you are on the sound number and you press execute again, you won't hear anything because there are no maps inside the 2000 yet. So the dial in front of that sound number shows you that you are in map override mode. That's very important to understand. So we'll play with those loop points at another time. Okay, so let's go out of map override mode and actually make some maps with those two samples. So in the 2000, a preset consists of two maps, a left map and a right map along with the settings that tell the presets how these maps interact with one another. The left maps are numbered 1 through 8 and the right maps 9 through G. And this is very important to know because only half of the memory can access the left map or the right map at any given time. So each half of the memory can hold 8 samples and up to 8 maps at the same time. Okay, so we had our two samples. Remember the C3 and C4 from the Juno 106, sound number one and sound number two. And now we're gonna map out sound number one. So we go into that second row and choose select maps. The display says 8G, so change that first digit to the left to one, press execute, change the right digit to nine and press execute. So this is now our first map, map number one. Now we press build keyboard map. The display says C3. And C3 will be the root note of that first sample. Remember, I sampled that at C3. You can change this if you want to. But now we have to specify the highest note of that sample, the B3, in this case, and I press execute. Now I go to the next sound number, straight to there, and I dial in number two. And now I go back to build keyboard maps, and I set that not to C3, now I set it to C4, because that's what I sampled. And since I only had two samples in this session, that C5 will be that last highest specified note value. So I press execute on that. So now I have successfully mapped out two sounds 
on the keyboard. And I could just as easily have sampled six Juno 106 string sounds and laid them out through the entire keyboard from C1 to C6. And here I've done just that. I've sampled C1 through C6 on my uh, Juno 106 and put them into the right positions using that same technique from the previous segment. All mapped out through the entire keyboard. So I've put it in sound number. You can see the display showing the different sound numbers as I play them. And the ranges. And number six at the top there. If I now go into uh, edit the filter, for instance, I would change only the filter on that sample number, the sound number. I again put it in override mode, but this time in map number override mode by pressing execute. So now I can do global changes to the whole set of samples, sound numbers. I didn't bother trimming start and end points on this, this was just to make an example. So this was done in five minutes with sampling and all and mapping. So it's quite easy when you know how to do it. But remember, if you're going to do a much more elaborate multi-sample with up to 16 samples, then you have to use at least two mappings. Because if you remember, uh, each half of the memory could only hold up to eight samples. To demonstrate the filter and resonance of the Prophet 2000, here's my demo track sampled into the 2000. I go into map override mode. And now I can play and manipulate a little bit on that sample to show you some of the sounds of the 2000.
few months after The Prophet 2000 had been released, Sequential released yet another sampler, the module version, The Prophet 2002. And where The Prophet 2000 had 256 kilobytes of RAM, the P2002 doubled that to 512 kilobytes of RAM. And it didn't take Sequential a long time to figure that there was a market for memory expansion, so they soon offered this 256 kilobytes of RAM expansion upgrade for the Prophet 2000 as well. And this started the trend where sampler manufacturers offered memory expansions for more or less a lot of money. Wine Country Productions, they actually released a Prophet 2000, 2002 survival kit where you get um, a couple of chips, uh, a filter chips among them, and uh, a couple of pots. I have to admit to you, in 2021, I don't use these old samplers much for multi-sampling at all. I don't see the need for that now. What I use these for today is simply sampling in my own sounds, which I need for a certain production or song where I know I want the sound of this sampler or this sampler. And let's say I want a bass uh, from a synth I have into a sampler. I just sample it and sample it in that key range I'm going to use in the song. So I just sample in one sample and uh, use that range on the song I'm working on. And shortly thereafter, I pretty much just uh, turn the sampler off. I don't bother uh, saving the sample at all because for the next song, I'm going to use another sound. So I use these old samplers for their sound characteristics or sound signature because they all sound different. And maybe one day I'll just stack up all the samplers I have and show you uh, how different they really can sound. Let's see what happens. But the Prophet 2000 is a gloriously good sounding sampler. It has a lot of uh, signatures and uh, the filter, the resonance, all analog of course, VCFs and the VCA, really bring something special to the sound. So if you see one for sale at a reasonable price, uh, in okay shape, pick it up as soon as you can because these will definitely not go down in price. I can't say if they were going to go up high in the future, but I think samplers are one of the few remaining items of the synth era of the 80s that are really undervalued, so uh, both musically and financially. So uh, just pick them up if you see them, but use them. Don't store them away. Old electronics needs to be fired up, warmed up and used. Otherwise, it will deteriorate faster than if you... Um, don't use it. So uh, buy them, use them, and publish your work with them. I love hearing the sounds of old samplers. Well, I'm rambling on. Uh, I'm very excited about this video. I'm very excited about the Prophet 2000. I'm very excited about samplers, as you probably know by now. So uh, thank you so much for watching. Thanks to all my Patreon supporters. That makes it possible for me to do this on a weekly basis. And uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank